Uh, good. Did you see the video that the Raiders.com put out of the locker room celebration? I did. You did. I did, and I was. But a tear to my eye. I was. I was, ple- I was pleasantly surprised at the just at the joy and the like just like the little boy enthusiasm yeah. right with when when uh Josh McDaniel said it was victory week uh it was I don't I don't think he's lost I don't his care team. how old you are I don't care what color you are I don't care how much money you make when you get when you get time off work that you earned you are doing backflips oh yeah oh yeah. yeah and you know what i don't i don't see a team that's tuned out their head coach mm-hmm. uh i i see a team that maybe hasn't been used to accountability as much mm-hmm. that's hasn't been used to maybe tougher coaching and i'm not i'm not i'm not uh taking uh Josh McDaniels off the hook. He still needs to be able to be that iron fist in the velvet glove. Like he needs to be able to better uh, deliver messages. Do some uh, iron fisting, if you will. Yeah, and with some velvet gloving. But uh, yeah, it's he hasn't lost his locker room. So uh, that was the end of like that video. It was like a minute twenty video. Um, the the middle part of the video was what struck me. Take a look. Dub. You really that boy? No, you that boy. You that boy. You that boy. You that boy. So that room did not fully celebrate until Derek Carr was there. Once he got in there, for those who didn't see on the podcast, they all swarmed him, jumped around him, and started chanting DC. Now, he had a really good game, but I wouldn't say he was even the MVP of the game. We did a, I did a poll on, right here on YouTube. It was like, all right, who do you think is the MVP of the win over the Raiders? And I put Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Max Crosby, Derek Carr, and other. Could have potentially even put Daniel Carlson on there. He had a 57 yarder, right? Fuck. And uh, and Carr got like third. He got like 12 percent of the vote. Wasn't you know he played really well and big part of the reason why we won. But Max Crosby was number one. Devonta Adams number two. But they really wouldn't start celebrating. They really like they were happy. They were high fiving. But the party didn't start until Derek Carr was in that locker room. And that's a big part of just being a quarterback in the NFL. Mm-hmm. But another big part of it is we we hear all the time from beat reporters, from the players themselves, Carr is the hardest worker in that building, right? First guy there, last guy out, trying to help everybody. He is the he is the the unequivocal leader of that room. And even I didn't expect that. Even I didn't think like like if I'm Max Crosby and Josh Jacobs are like. Look at us, bro. Denzel Perryman and Devontae Adams were in that clip. And you saw Perryman fucking blast Melvin Gordon one time. Devontae Adams, two touchdowns, like looked great. You'd think like those two guys would be like, dude, let's jerk each other off. Like we're awesome, right? It was just like, what up? What up? What up? We're happy. What up? Where's Derek? Where's DC? And then that's when the party started. So that was my biggest takeaway from this is that well, my second biggest takeaway. The first first takeaway is watching just like the youthful joy of a locker room of a season that to you and I feels like it's lost. Now it's just like, all right, let's just learn each other better. Let's figure out who's going to stick around for next year. Let's learn the system. Let's try to get accustomed to these new coaches. Like that's kind of how we're feeling it. The locker room doesn't feel that way. That locker room is still, we are a football team with one goal and that's to win every single game we go out there. So that's number one. Number two was I, I did not expect that level of cohesion exclusively around exclusively around QB one. Yeah. The, I, I wasn't as surprised with the reaction to Derek Carr coming in as I was to the reaction that Joshua Daniels got because Carr has been there for years. 
Mm -hmm. and he's the unquestioned leader of the team and he gets respect from his teammates that's something that i never doubted um he played a really really good game and um that's what we need and and fairly unfairly when the court when the team wins the quarterback gets you know a line share of the credit and when they lose he gets a line share of the blame um the the issue that we, we see with him is his consistency and he's had you know about three stinkers uh maybe four this season maybe that he's got them all of his system and we got smooth sailing from here on out i'm wondering too so i i have been giving credit for last year's late surge to rich Bisaccia. i felt like okay i think this team just kind of loved their like this team loved their interim coach the coach loved them back they went through so much shit together and that's how they were able to win back to back to back to back games over teams more talented. Than them. I was like, okay, Pisaccia led them through this. And that's co- partly why too, I've been extra hard on Josh McDaniels because the team's playing so worse this season. What's the big change coach, right? This made me kind of think maybe Carr was the leader through the, that last run more than we gave him credit for. And his play was not great. Like he didn't play fantastic. It was poor. His play was poor. He, was, it was. It was probably he, to he be flashed. fair. To be fair, he was probably one of his worst four games stretch of the season. He uh, he he showed up in flashes randomly when he had to, but it wasn't you know nowhere near like his the opening four games of the season, right? When it was like no. he couldn't win unless he played amazing, right? Multiple turnovers but, every game. A lot like, of it, turnovers, it right? Tough. He was still he was still turnover car last season. All last yeah, season, it was tough. It was tough. Um, but now I'm starting to think, huh? Maybe maybe Carr was the catalyst. Maybe the team rallied around Carr more than I, more than maybe any of us really recognized. I mean, it's possible. I mean, he's he's definitely like I said, he's the leader of the team, and mm-hmm. he's not going to pull stupid shit like freaking Zach Wilson and you know, just be an entitled spoiled brat. He's yeah. going to go out there and he's going to take his lumps and he's going to take more than his share of blame and he's not going to call people out individually uh in public and he's going to keep the locker room sacred and uh, i wouldn't doubt it if it was him um and, and i even said it like when when people are oh yeah Derek carr led him to the playoffs like well i mean yeah his leadership maybe his play not so much but his leadership sure i i definitely agree with that and i was also curious how they respond to um you know it's 2022 and grown men crying doesn't have the same stigma that it has even like 10 years ago, let alone 20. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, all right, are they going to follow a dude who like cries at the podium after, after a loss? The answer is fuck. Yes. <laughs> like that, that didn't affect how the team viewed him at all. Apparently. You know what? People let out emotions in different ways. And I'm sure that there was a lot more emotion than that being shown in the locker room. Yeah. Especially, I mean, if people were being called out like we heard they were that's a great uh, point that was just the know, public crying god only knows what they were doing to you know how they were being emotional when the doors were closed you know you got a guy goes out after his best friend on the team who was the head coach gets fired and then one of the guys he's trying to bring along and put his arm around and, and mentor gets cut for killing somebody drunk driving uh he, he had, and he shows that brave face to the public and then you see that same guy trying to get it together to go out for his press conference you're like man this guy is really committed and that that has never has never been something that i have questioned about Derek Carr is his commitment to the team or his commitment to keeping what he feels is the right locker room etiquette i'm not saying he's right or wrong but what he feels his locker room et- etiquette is keeping that and upholding that uh and being a leader on the team that's, that's never been anything that i've questioned there's really nothing that can bring down like if you're the hardest worker on the team right if you're if you're the like, you put in more work than everyone else right um it's almost impossible to come down on someone who's doing that who says we need to work harder when you're the hardest worker, like John, John, Gr- like, um, it was one of the best things John Gruden said when he was doing it. We talked about it on the show multiple times. We did like a coaching combine and we played some audio from it. And one of them was he was talking about how 
the best player on your team has to be the hardest worker. Gotta be. Because he sets the precedent for everyone else. They can't think, they can't look at, you know, Antonio Brown, who's a fuck up, but he's the all-star. Like you can't have that be the example. You can't have that in these 22 year old rookies minds that, Oh, that's how superstars behave. It's no, the hardest workers are the best players. And well, and the reason, the reason yeah. for that is everybody that's made it to the NFL is an alpha male and they all think they're the best player. They just haven't had the shot yet. Mm -hmm. So if you see, Someone who people feel is your best player on your team, not giving it their all and fucking up. Oh, well, I'm as good as he is. I just haven't had my shot yet, so I can yeah. fuck up too. When you see everybody working hard and the best players working, the hardest workers, then that puts everyone else in line. And that, and that also gives you the power to call people out, right? Yeah. Like, if I'm here three hours before you, Soto, I can say, Soto, get your shit together. I can say that because I'm doing it, right? If, you know... If, if I leave two hours before you do, you can text me as I'm driving off. Hey, you piece of shit. Like, we're working to win here. Yeah. Where are you? Like, you have that you have that equity, I guess, in the locker room, right? And that's what Derek Carr brings. Congratulations for making it all the way to the end of our video. If you want Darren Waller to catch 20 touchdown passes next season and for Max Crosby to have 30 sacks, go ahead and subscribe and click the next video.